Okay, I think my presenter is not here, so I'm going. Uh, I can do it. I have no problem. All right, I'm going to introduce uh, Ramon. Uh, everybody knows him, right? He's been a long time Plone uh, contributor and author or co author of uh, Guillotina. And now he's going to talk about uh, Guillotina CMS. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, this talk is, um, first of all, it's a work in progress. Okay, um, we've been um, improving and developing Guillotina CMS as a layer to to create CMSs with the same API as uh, Plone has, but it's still a work in process. We use in production, and I really um, invite you to join to to contribute to it to to make it more more bigger and more stable. So, you who am I? Uh, I want to use this this opportunity to thank Plum Conference because it's really lovely to see so many talks about Guillotina. No? We we did a talk on Monday on the Tokyo Meetup, a training on Guillotina, a talk about Guillotina, a talk this talk about CMS. Later we have a talk about Guillotina on real case studies with uh, Plum React. So it's really cool. So what is Guillotina CMS? Um, this slide is uh, identical to the one I used yesterday on the Guillotina talk. It's an AsyncIO uh, framework designed to scale and to manage resources with security and traversal like Plone on the CMS use case. And mostly uh, yesterday I was explaining at my Guillotina talk that we have Guillotina as a framework that uh, connects to databases, catalog, uh, cache systems, wherever, that provides a, a good backend infrastructure. And on the Plume community, we have Volto, who is doing uh, the front end in React. Uh, we have Angular Traversal, uh, NGX Schema Form, NSF Pastanaga on the Angular wall that are uh, components to build your applications with Angular or I I Ionic. And they are really cool. It works really well with the Plone REST API. So we wanted to fill the gap between the Guillotina system and all this uh, front-end ecosystem that we have. So we created Guillotina CMS. That is just an add-on for Guillotina that provides the needed uh, um, endpoints to um, cover the, um, the differences from the uh, Plone REST API to the Guillotina API. So what are these differences? Though this is the list of the different um, set of endpoints on the Plone REST API. No? For example, all the authentication system, it's already built in Guillotina. We don't need to care about that. All the content manipulation, meaning all the CRUD, doing the gets, the post, and deletes of the content, it's already built in Guillotina. No problem. All the history management, uh, this is not on Guillotina. Guillotina doesn't um, do out-of-the-box history management, but this is implemented on Guillotina CMS. Batching, the same. Comments, it's still not on Guillotina CMS and needs to be implemented, just we didn't have the use case to need to do that. A Plone app discussion or API on, on, on comments uh, could be implemented easily on Guillotina CMS. Copy of and moving of objects is already on the Guillotina, C, uh, Guillotina package. Portal actions. Portal actions is uh, something that uh, we are now defining uh, specifically for uh, sp uh, each project. So we don't need a persistent layer on the database. So right now it's not implemented on Guillotina CMS, but could be easily implemented. What else? Workflows. Work I will explain later. Workflows, it's something that we, um, that Guillotina doesn't offer, but Guillotina CMS, it's providing the Workflows API from Plone, just a different implementation and a different way of configuring it. Locking system, right now we don't have uh, it implemented on Guillotina CMS. Sharing, everything uh, uh, in order to share one uh, resource to, to a user, uh, it's already implemented on Guillotina. The registry, in order to configure specific things for each uh, container. It's also on Guillotina. 
Which types do you, uh, do you have? Same. User management. Guillotina doesn't have user management out of the box, and Guillotina CMS doesn't provide also any user management. We delegate that to what the specific kind of use case do you have. Uh, out of the box, if you want to have uh, a, like a plone site with Bolto, um, uh, with uh, Guillotina, you could use Guillotina DB users that it's storing the users on as resources on the on the on the tree. Groups, it's exactly the same. Uh, which components, uh, breadcrumbs, navigations? This is specific endpoints from the Plone REST API in order to provide the navigation and the breadcrumbs. This is already implemented on Guillotina CMS. All the serialization and deserialization also on Guillotina. The search API, and I will uh, spend a bit of time on the search API uh, of Guillotina, it's already implemented. Uh, TOS upload of files, Guillotina already provides. Vocabulary management, being able to define which languages do you have or any kind of vocabulary that you need, it's already implemented on Guillotina CMS. Control panels. We are still not uh, providing this, this option. It's something that if somebody has the use case and, and the need of providing them, it's, it's easy to implement. Tiles, it's already on Guillotina CMS. And sending email, we have a specific. So we are covering nearly most of the things of the Plone REST API. But we, what, the way we developed this is we, instead of going to Plone and checking what Plone does, we went to the Plone REST API. <laughs> and we check what Plone REST API does. And we, implement, we, we implemented trying to follow up that API. So we, we are not kind of um, focused on what Plone is doing by itself. So I'm going to cover just a bit, some of the most important things that uh, from this list that we implemented on the uh, Guillotina CMS. Uh, vocabularies, right now we have three vocabularies implemented, it's just uh, languages, uh, workflow states, and content layouts. It's kind of simple, we use a decorator, we define that we want a vocabulary, and then we just provide uh, the standard Pythonic ways of going through an object. And in this case, we have a, we copied the list of languages from Plone, and we just provide, I provide in all the list of the languages that Plone has. Link integrity, it's something that, um, there is no API in this case, but it's something that we need to provide. We already implemented, there, uh, it's in a, uh, in a separate add-on, it's called uh, guillotine underscore link integrity, and it's, just, uh, it's doing both things. It's making sure that if you are moving a content, you still are being redirected, and we are storing this information on a Redis, and we are also checking that every time you are uh, touching the, um, the, the HTML code of a page, the, the uh, URLs are uh, redirected, uh, re rewritten. We have also the resolve URI URL, so you can uh, reference an object by the URI. Constraint types, constraint, and it's, a, it's a typo. Uh, it's, it's what Plone is using to say, on this folder, I just want to use to have documents or news or whatever. It's already implemented. It's really easy. There is no API right now on, on, on Plone, so we needed to create the API. And I, we hope that Plone then is adapting this API as their standard API. Syndication, in order to be able to subscribe to a specific folder, it's already also implemented uh, on Guillotina CMS. And here, uh, as the last thing of these small items, behaviors. We have some differences um, to the Plone REST API on the Guillotina REST API. And this is the biggest one and the most um, difficult one. We are not flattening the fields from the behaviors on the main object. So when you, you get the, the, a page, all the fields from the Dublin core are nested inside a key of the Dublin core behavior. Because we are really splitting the behaviors when we are serializing and giving that information to be more explicit on the serialization and deserialization of the information. 
In order to make this easier for the front end to understand what's behavior and what's not behavior, we're providing a specific key, it's called a static behaviors, where you can list all the keys of the behaviors that you have on your content. So you know that that specific key is a behavior. Rob did an amazing job in order to implement this in Bolto, so I really want to thank him that we have this feature already implemented on Bolto. Um, content types, well, I think it's the l less interesting kind of things because it's they are really simple to implement. But we already are providing document, news, files, link, and events that are this, the easy ones. And we are working on implementing collections also. No folders. Oh, folders, yeah, sorry. Folders is it's already on Guillotina, so it's not Guillotina CMS. We implemented two specific fields, the rich text field uh, that um, for some reason Plone needs to have uh, on the API the encoding and the, the content of the text and what kind, if it's HTML or uh, what kind of uh, field is it, and the image field in order to uh, be able to have images on the site. So workflows, what we did here, uh, I've been Plone developer for all. I don't know, 10 years, 12 years, I don't know. Uh, and one of the <laughs> most crazy things I ever needed to do is to, to do an XML about workflows on Plone, no? And to, to go there, and I was, come on, this is so crazy. I want to create my own uh, workflow by hand, and it's really complex. So when I was thinking how I would love to have workflows, no, I say, okay, I'm going to check this XML and I'm going just to try to represent in something that feels comfortable for me. So I use YAML. No? And so now uh, workflows are defined with a YAML file where you define which is the initial state, then the different states, the actions that you can do, which is the guard for this action, and which permissions are set when you go to this state. It's a really simple approach it covers most of the use cases that Plone has. We have on Guillotina CMS, there is one example of this YAML for the simple publication workflow that you can, you can check out. It's really large. And for, for me, the nice uh, thing I wanted to maintain is um, that what we have in, our, in the set permissions is the same payload you will set on, this, on the sharing. So. Well, you know when you are doing uh, a workflow, you are publishing something, you are applying the permissions the same way you will do a sharing post to modify the permissions on that object. By this um, payload, you could copy and just use that on, 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 the, on the REST endpoint. We still need to provide mechanisms in order to execute uh, code when uh, the action happens or do more crazy things, but uh, it covered our use cases right now, and at least it's, you are able to publish and unpublish um, content. And it's also used, uh, internally you have an event where you can subscribe, and so you could also write code when something is published to do whatever you want. Search. Well, we, we had a long discussion with Timo. It's a shame that he, he's not here. Because um, when I was facing to implement search, I was facing the search URLs from Plone and uh, colon list, uh, um, different arguments. It was I needed to implement a lot of things in order to provide that 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 kind of feature on on Guillotine CMS. So I was discussing with with him, kind of saying search has imp has changed a lot during the last years. Now, for example. Uh, and giants like uh, Elasticsearch, Solar provides aggregation. You can uh, do kind of really specific things on the search that are auto completion or different kind of things. So why we don't try to provide a search endpoint on Plum REST API that it's a bit more powerful? And we reached uh, arranged the consensus. That is what I'm going to show. And. The uh, Plum REST API will try to implement this same API at least when there is collective Elasticsearch or um, 
as our solar. So first of all, uh, a list. Um, it's defined on the query with a plus symbol. If instead of uh, how um, uh, Zop is uh, converting the the, um, the the lists, we just define like this, and we are defining a list on, on the query. If I want to search that the text is exactly that text on a field, just the field name underscore underscore equal and whatever we want to, to define that it's we want to search. If we want to search that this text may be on the on the field, then we use in instead of equal. If we want to search that it's not on the field, we just use the underscore underscore not. If we want to use a wildcard search, the same thing. If we want to uh, filter based on a keyword, that for example, subject or language, we could use directly like that. If we want to work with numbers, and we want to say bigger, uh, equal, uh, greater, the same kind of modifiers. The same for the dates. Then, when you know what you are going to search, you want to say, okay, now I just want to get some specific fields. I don't want to get all the different index uh, metadata fields that I might get when I'm getting a brain. So I can define which um, specific fields I want to serialize and which specific fields I don't want to serialize on the payload I'm going to receive. Then, of course, I want to sort. I want to define a batch size in order to do batching on, on the search results. Aggregations. That's something that is only supported if you have Elasticsearch or Solar, that you, you get uh, how many objects there is for uh, a specific uh, key, keyword elements that you want to filter out in order to provide a facet, a facet navigation. And for the path, we have a specific uh, modifier that underscore underscore starts, so you can define um, that your path starts with plum folder. So really easily, uh, this is to escape the plus, if you want to use the plus. So, right now, if you want to search on uh, a path that it's folder with a def of two, this is how you will do now in Plone, and this is how you do uh, with uh, with this new app API that's implemented with in a CMS. Path underscore, uh, I missed the underscore here, and there also. And it's the same. If you want to search something that has a title and it's a document, it's nearly the, it's you can easily map things up and down. If you want to do a more complex search, kind of that it's published, that um, that has a specific portal type and it's uh, the the review state. You can you can map it to aggregations. We are also providing images, which it, uh, so we are using pillow and plone scale uh, to be able to resize the images and to provide the different uh, sizes of the images, like plone does the thumbnail size and all the different sizes. So you you just need to reference the resource at, at images, the field name, and the scale that you want to use. And the skills are defined on the configuration.yaml. We have pubs up. Uh, what it means is that you can subscribe to changes of one uh, object. Uh, so we will see the, uh, later a demo about that. And now we are going to see the demo. So the demo is going to be a bit. Um,
First of all, this demo I'm going to show you is using this configuration file. What we have here, we are connecting to a database, a Postgres database that I have on my laptop. I'm loading these um, applications, Swagger, because I want to provide a Swagger definition, Guillotine CMS, Elasticsearch and Redis, and DB users. And the rest is much more standard. And configuring the Elasticsearch here. And here, I'm defining which workflows. You don't need to define all the workflows that you're going to use on your configuration.yaml. You can import them if you have on a folder or define default ones on, on your system. And here, for example, I have that it's private, I am publishing, or, and then I'm being able to retire. And the only difference is that I'm allowing Anonymous to, to see it, to access to it, and to, to see it. And at the end, you, you are defining for each inter, in, uh, interface which workflow do you want to use. So for example, for, uh, stand, for the standard I resource, I'm going to use the basic one. And for the I document, I'm, I'm going to use the guillotine simple publication that it's a file I have on my uh, package. So now I started the, um, the guillotine. And let me see where I have my browser. Here. By default, Guillotina provides you executioner that it's uh, done by Eric and Amatilde, uh, which is an amazing kind of uh, ZMI, but um, for, for, um, for Guillotina, where you log in here, you see that we have one database. There is nothing here. So we are going to create one, one container. It's what it's one site. And I'm going to call it CMS. Once I have the, the site, I can go to the add-ons. And OK, I want to install DB users. Now you see that it created two folders, one for the users and one for the group. And I'm going also to install Guillotine CMS. Both of them are now installed. I can go to the CMS here, and I can decide I want to create a new folder. And on this folder, I'm going to create a page, a document. And now, in this document, thank you to the release we did yesterday, <laughs> you are able to edit, and you see a rich text editor here, and a full edit uh, page of the document, where you can even go to here and... So we have a minimal using, uh, I think it's medium editor. Um, um, rich text editor where you can also edit pages through the um, through the executioner. You can also go here and see which is the payload that we are going to send, and you see all the JSON that is going to be sent to uh, to the to the backend in case that you want to to do the um, in the, uh, the JSON by itself. Now it's updated, so. We have a, a way to edit a guillotine CMS. Kind of simple. Well, I can also create multiple sites. So now I'm going to create one. It's called web. And now I'm going to go to. So I have two versions of Bolto here. One. This is the standard one, and this is 3,000. Yeah. So this is Volto. So you see, now I'm in Volto. I'm seeing the same content I just created with Executioner. I'm connecting to the same one. And I can go here, and I can create a folder, say, Set the title, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
So I have I have the folder, and now I go. I create the document. Oh, I'm able to see the Pastanaga editor. Amazing. Well, as you see, I've been able to push uh, an image, no problem, everything works. I have a clone site, and the backend is guillotine CMS. And I can even go to, um, to the search. And, well, I'm receiving a lot of things, but well, we are able to search for the content. So that's Pastanaga with uh, Bolto and Guillotina CMS. That's really great. Even we can go to our Swagger here. Now we can check here what we have. I think I changed the CMS. And now, if you have a front-end developer, you can go here and check all the different uh, endpoints that we have for the root folder. And you can, well, go and check wherever you want. Uh, I, I missed also, of course, here we have the different uh, states. We can change the, um, the state of the content, or you can change the display based on the layouts that Boto has. Um, if, and finally, I'm going to do a really this is this is going to be risky. We have another version of Bolto that it's on a branch that's called WebSockets that we did at the Girona uh, Costa Brava Sprint uh, on July. So it's a bit outdated and needs to be merged. But I'm going to try to see if I'm able to execute it. Oh. So here I have to let me get it down this time. Oh. Where can I get oh, here? So I'm going to create a page um, I'm going to say it uh, demo. I have a page that's called demo, and here if I refresh this thing, I should see the page, wait a moment, demo effect. Mm. Sorry. Demo, okay, I'm on the same page. Now I go here, I go here. All the connection between the Bolto, it's gone, it's going through a WebSocket. It means that every get request, post request, everything that needs to interact with the API, it's done through um, a WebSocket connection. That plus the option of being being able to use the pub sap allows us to to interconnect. And here we are using the diff map diff match patch protocol from Google in order to map uh, differences on the fields. But um, it took us I don't know uh, one day or two days to <laughs> to do this proof of concept. Uh, it needs uh, still the the WebSocket connection. It's um, is it to be merged? Let me see, I was wanting to show it a bit. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show. Uh, network, web sockets. Mm. I 
I don't know why. Either. On the data power. Oh. oh yeah, thank you. Sorry, the screen is so small. <laughs> I can <laughs> I can't even see it. Uh, Well, now it doesn't appear. I can assure you that uh, we have the web socket and all the communication it's done through there. Um, I can show you later if anybody's interested. I don't know where I have my other. Mm, here. So I think that's all. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if there is questions. Thank you. Uh, might be a bit a stupid question, but uh, on the search, you were um, showing a search by date. And uh, how do you define which format of the date? Uh, the American format where you have the months first and the day after, or the European format where you have Today first and the, the month after. Here, here we are using the magic of uh, Python data utils, which is able to parse. And at the end, it's uh, this library who is able to parse and detect what kind of data you are sending and try to be as much as smart as possible to detect that. There is a library in Python which uh, uh, you send a date in a string format and it tries to guess uh, which is the best match. If you do uh, the year, uh, wherever you want, it works. Yeah, yeah, of, co of course, of and course. How is it going to guess between day or month? It, that, uh, if you read the Python date util uh, from, we, I really think it's a, a really good approach. Uh, besides that, it's just a matter of that you are, de uh, you are defining that on your code. But right now, in order to deliver something fast, we are using Python data. Yeah, I was wondering what kind of, uh, what you modeled the search, uh, I guess the, the, the pattern, the, uh, my brain's not working. Uh, what did you copy, or did you copy the way that you pass search parameters? Well, I try to do a bit of uh, research about how uh, different systems are doing these param this sending parameters, no? and mostly ori oriented to content management nowadays, I don't know, LifeRay or different other systems. Also how Google is parsing uh, this, these variables and how people are used to use these this, this, um, modifiers. And I just try to reach a consensus that fits with Elasticsearch or and Solar behind it. Any other question? No? Right. <laughs> Any plan to have the WebSocket thing connected to the Pastanaga editor? So you That's a question for this guy, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> So you can collaboratively edit using Pastanag Editor. So you can see new blocks and so on dynamically. Yes, that would be nice. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, there is a, it's not difficult to, um, to use the WebSocket connection and the Pubs app. It just It's kind of a, a lot of work to make compatible with what we have right now and also the collaborative edit on the same namespace, I think. I remember a few years ago, I think Jarn was showing something like this, and the problem they ran into is that the parsing of the HTML, the, the ar algorithm wasn't aware of HTML, and therefore it would potentially send garbage. Is that something that's been solved since? What? Well. <laughs> 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 
Uh, yes and no. So uh, fixing the HTML isn't fixed, uh, but in the Pastanaka editor, uh, we're using Draft.js, which uh, uh, under the surface uses JSON, and it's just JSON with some text, so we can actually do the divs on there. So we can do it. Yeah. Okay, nothing else? Thank you so much.